1938 and 1965, described as the golden era with sellout crowds at Fisher Field. Those years produced three games decided by one point, 14 others decided by a touchdown. Phillipsburg produced five unbeaten teams. Easton had two unbeaten teams. The 28-year record had Phillipsburg with 14 wins, Easton with 13, and one tie game. The Golden Era also produced four of the outstanding coaches in series history. Frank Klein and Harold Bellis of Phillipsburg, and Elmer Carroll and Bob Root of Easton. The Varsity E-Club is proud to present Highlights of the Golden Era, a film first produced by the Eastern Rotary Club in 1966. The Red Rovers were trying to make it three straight over the State Liners in the 1938 game. Playing on a snow-covered frozen field, Phillipsburg was forced to punt late in the opening period. Red Rover star Bobby Root fielded the punt and began to weave his way downfield. With the Phillipsburg tackler closing in, Root lateraled the ball to Frank Erbio, who takes it the distance for a 75-yard scoring play. The extra point attempt was no good, and Easton had a 6 to nothing lead. In the second period, Easton moved out to its 36. On the next play, Root, who would become a Red Rover coach in 1948, picked and weaved his way through the Phillipsburg defense on a 64-yard scoring run. Again, George Keck's extra point attempt was no good. And the score remained Easton 12 to nothing. In the second half, the Rovers were forced to punt from their end zone. The State Liners got great field position at the 12 and tried the old Statue of Liberty, but it resulted in only one yard. On second down, Frank Horvath found room up the middle for six. The State Liners powered off tackle on third down for a first and goal at the one. Then it was Horvath plunging into the end zone for the score. Captain Butch Kerr added the extra point, ending the scoring with Easton posting a 12 to seven victory. Carroll's 1939 Easton team came into Fisher Field with an unbeaten season on the line. The game was still scoreless in the final period when Easton got the ball at its own 17 after a Phillipsburg punt. All-state halfback Bobby Root, a Rover co-captain, got the drive started with a first down run. The Rovers tried the middle for short yardage. Easton went to the air with Root making the catch for another first down. Root came up with another big gainer, using a straight arm to take the ball deep in Phillipsburg territory. The Rovers came back with a sweep to the left to the State Liner 5. Easton then tried a power run and the ball was on the 2. Another plunge took it to the 1. Then it was Rush Stalen going the final yard for the score with three minutes left. And the Easton cheerleader celebrated. Root added the extra point. Easton had a 7-0 win and its first perfect season since 1925. Root finished the day with 153 yards. It was the 250th win in Easton High football history. The 1945 game turned into a defensive battle. Phillipsburg had won seven straight before losing to Bethlehem. In the fourth period, the State Liners had the ball at their own 27, and then the touchdown twins collaborated for the only score of the game. Mickey Frenzy eluded a tackler and lofted a strike to Dutch Sight. It was a 73-yard touchdown play and the only score of the game. The State Liners winning 6 to nothing. In 1946, Easton brought a 6-3 record into Turkey Day, while the State Liners were 6-2. A record crowd estimated at 23,000 jammed every inch of space at Fisher Field. For the Rovers, they would be playing their last game under veteran coach Elmer Carroll. In 12 years, he had a record of 75 wins, 31 losses, and 8 ties. An interested observer in the Easton bench was team chaplain Reverend Hugh Kemper. Phillipsburg coach Frank Klein started the season with a young team, but they started fast with three straight wins. Duke Frenzy and Ed Rush led the ground attack, and there were a pair of left-handed quarterbacks, Dave Sheets and Don Nixon. Easton's Frank Pepperato and Phillipsburg's Ray Mantoni were at midfield for the flip of the coin. After a scoreless first period, Easton had to punt in the second. Duke Frenzy got the State Liners offense going with a three-yard run. 
Then it was Dave Sheets firing a perfect jump pass for a six-yard pickup. Frenzy broke off a nice gain to the 24, but a penalty put the State Liners back in the Easton 38. Then it was Sheets lofting a pass to Pete Swagger, and he lateraled to Frenzy to complete the 38-yard scoring play. The extra point attempt by Joe Ferraro was no good, and Phillipsburg had a 6-0 lead. In the third period, Sheets found Swagger for a 23-yard scoring strike. Ferraro booted the point after. It was 13-0. In the final period, another Easton punt put the State Liners in scoring position again. On first down, the State Liners tried left tackle. Then it was Sheets and a keeper. Another power run put the ball at the nine. Back to the same play for four more yards. Ed Rush had no luck and lost two. The Garnett and Gray came back with a pitch out for a yard. Then it was Sheets with his third scoring pass of the game. Ed Williver made the catch. The extra point was no good and Phillipsburg had a 19 to nothing victory. In 1948, both teams came to Fisher Field with subpar records. Phillipsburg was 5-4, while Easton was 3-5-1 under first-year head coach Bob Root. Phillipsburg kicked off to start the game, and Lee Dorsey brought it out to the 23. The Rover offense opened with Dorsey getting a yard at tackle. On second down, a jump pass for Larry Kick was incomplete. Halfback Johnny Keyes managed only two yards on third down. The Rovers were forced to punt, but the State Liners' Austin O'Hara blocked the kick to set the State Liners up at the Rover 15. Russ Diltz got the offense moving with five quick yards. Then it was Don Lear bullying his way to the six. On third down, Lear made it to the five for a first and goal. Then it was Diltz off tackle for the first of his three touchdowns of the day. Frank Stone added the point after, and it was 7-0 Phillipsburg. Easton tried three plays after the kickoff and was forced to punt again. There was a bad snap from center, and Jarrell scrambled and finally threw an incomplete pass. Phillipsburg was at the Rover 35, and Homer McRoberts cranked up a 22-yard strike to Joe Zambathi. McRoberts got a yard and first down and a rollout. Diltz managed three at right tackle. On third down at the nine, McRoberts went back to Zambathi for the score. Stone added the point, and Phillipsburg was rolling at 14 to nothing. The Rovers were back in punt formation later in the half, and it was Diltz again. He cut through Easton tacklers, and with a good fake at the 10, he completed a 39-yard punt return for the touchdown. The extra point try failed, and Phillipsburg had the lead at 20 to nothing. In the third period, Phillipsburg took over at its 10, and Diltz got five. Then, the most spectacular play of the day. Watch Leaky Lear weave his way from sideline to sideline for an 85-yard scoring jump. Kick missed him at the six, and then he picked up a block from Bob Rush, and he was off to the races. The extra point was no good, and the Garnet and Gray lead was 26 to nothing. Another Easton punt, and another touchdown returned by Russ Diltz. He gets a key block from Joe Smulik at the 20, and his 39-yard return is his third touchdown of the game. Stone adds 
gets the conversion, and the state liner lead is 33-0. In the final period, McRoberts fires his second scoring pass of the game, four yards to Bob Waffles Rush. Stone adds the point after, and the scoreboard reads 40 to nothing. Later in the period, the Phillipsburg line swarms on the Eastern punter with Jarvis and Morgan getting the block. On first down from the 20, Fran Nahilla dives for four yards. On the next play, Dave Oswald turns the left side for nine and a first and goal at the seven. Dick Jarvis managed a yard in the middle. Then it was Oswald for two at left tackle. On third down, Nahilla breaks a tackle to get the final touchdown. The extra point was no good, and the State Liners celebrated a 46 to nothing win, their highest point total in the series. Phillipsburg piled up over 300 yards in the ball game. Phillipsburg came to Fisher Field in 1949 with a perfect 8-0 record and a 10-game win streak. The Rovers with a 7-2 mark punted in the first period. On first down, Russ Diltz picked up five yards. On the next play, penalty flags nullified the play. Then it was Diltz for three yards. With the ball at the 28, Leo Sokolowski turned right in to put the State Liners in the lead. Bob Eisenhower's extra point attempt was no good. Phillipsburg had the lead at six to nothing. With Easton in possession, the ball popped loose, and the State Liners recovered at their own 27. Diltz took a pitch out and swept the right side for 22 yards and a first down. Then it was Sokolowski banging over midfield with a rover 45. It was back to Sokolowski for two more yards. Diltz got the call on third down and ran it to the 35. On first down, fullback Dick Jarvis hit right tackle for two more. Diltz got the call, another first down at the 19. Jarvis took a pitch out to the right for eight more yards. Sokolowski then bowled his way over right tackle for a first down at the three. Quarterback Gene Harrison fumbled and recovered at the five, but Easton was off sides in the play. Then it was Diltz hitting Pater. The extra point attempt was no good and Phillipsburg had a 12 to nothing lead late in the opening period. Early in the second period, Easton was forced to punt. Gus Trincheria fielded the ball at his own 15 and looked for his blockers. He picked up good blocks near midfield and closed it out with a great fake on Oscar Dorsey. An 85 yard punt return for a touchdown. Eisenhower added the point, and the Garnet and Gray led 19 to nothing. In the third period, Easton punted again. This time it was Diltz with a good return to the state liner 41. On first down, Diltz used his shifty running style to weave his way through a host of tacklers on a 59-yard scoring run. He closed out his career with 140 points. Eisenhower's PAT was good, and the State Liners were in command at 26 0. Later in the third period, another Easton punt. Diltz brings it back to the Easton 46.
on first down a pass picks up 11 yards then it's Sokolowski turning right in for six yards Diltz gets outside for 13 more It's Diltz again for six yards to the 10 yard line. On second down, Sokolowski takes it to the three for a first and goal. Dick Jarvis gets two. And Gene Harrison tops it off with a sneak for the score. The extra point is good, and the State Liners lead 33-0. The Rovers' offense came alive late in the final period. Oscar Dorsey returned a State Liner punt to the 22. On first down, Claude Danner was stopped for no gain. Dick Snyder tried a jump pass, incomplete. On third down, Snyder faked the pass and picked up eight yards. Dorsey kept the drive alive by taking a pitch out for 10 yards to the four yard line. Dick Chidsey got Easton on the scoreboard by going the final four yards. The Phillipsburg fans started celebrating early, and a goalpost came down, so Bob Gass booted the PAT through a broken upright. Phillipsburg had a 33-7 victory in an undefeated 9-0 season, the sixth undefeated season in school history. Easton coach Bob Root was still looking for his first win in the series as the teams lined up in 1950. Phillipsburg got the jump in the opening period, moving the ball to the Rover 49. On second down, Earl Lippincott hit left tackle for a 16-yard gain. Another handoff to Lippincott gained four more. Then it was Lippincott again, but this time the Rovers stacked him up for a two-yard loss. On third down, Don Wiley pitched out to Gus Trincheria, who looked downfield, but underthrew Dick Barbadora. Now it was fourth down, and Wiley hit Lippincott out of the backfield for a first down at the 18. Trincheria picked up three more. But Lippincott was thrown for a two-yard loss. Then it was Riley to the air with Sully Morgan making a great catch over the middle. It was first and goal at the two, but Phillipsburg was offsides. On the next play, Lippincott went right to get two. Then it was Trincheria on a misdirection play for the touchdown. The extra point was no good, and Phillipsburg had a 6-0 lead. Easton scored late in the period on Oscar Dorsey's 64-yard run for a 7-6 lead. The State Liners got another scoring drive in the second period, with the lineman picking up Riley's fumble for a two-yard gain. Trincheria on a fake punt picked up a first down at the State Liner 49. Riley went back to the air, hitting Trincheria, who got a solid block from Sully Morgan at the Easton 38. On first down, Lippincott rambled 14 yards for another first down. Lippincott hit the middle for eight more. Then it was Riley on a sneak for the first down at the three. Lippincott banged his way to the one. On second down, Riley lost a yard. Riley fooled the Rover defense with a third down pass for the two yard scoring strike to Dick Barbadora. Sam McGavaro added the point and Phillipsburg had a 13 to seven lead. third period, a Phillipsburg fumble was recovered by the Rovers. On 
first down. Halfback Joe Casenzo picked up 10 yards and a first down at the 12. Casenzo got the call again and made it to the one. Dick Snyder was stacked up for no gain and a sneak. The Rovers went right back to Casenzo in a dive at right tackle, and the game was tied at 13-13 with 1.25 left in the period. A bad snap from center prevented the Rovers from taking the lead. Following the kickoff, Phillipsburg was on its own 29. Riley went back to pass, but Bob Sutton read it all the way, and the Rover defender stepped in front and took it 37 yards for the winning touchdown. Jake Boylan booted the extra point, and Easton had a 20 to 13 win to cap off an eight and two season. It was the Rovers' first win on Turkey Day in seven years. Phillipsburg finished at five and four. In 1951, Phillipsburg was unbeaten. Seven wins in a tie with Bethlehem. The Rovers 5-2-2 two and, two and coming off back-to-back -back scoreless ties against Allentown and Central Catholic. Rover joined the action early. After a scoreless first period, Phillipsburg took the ball to the Easton 16 with Gus Trincheria picking up five. Kenny Lutz then pitched to Trincheria who went wide left for a first down at the six. Trincheria got the call again, but lost a yard. Then it was Dick Jarvis trying the right side. He got to the one. On third down, Jim Darrupple scored. Steve Emery's extra point attempt was no good, and the State Liners had a six to nothing lead. took the second half kickoff and had good field position at their own 38-yard line. On first down, halfback Henry Payne hit a simple dive, and he was gone. 62 yards for the score. Dick Hanlon booted the extra point, and the underdog Red Rovers had a 7-6 lead just 45 seconds into the second half. Early in the final period, Easton had the ball on its own 44. Roland DeLuca hit the left side for 14 big yards. DeLuca came right back to the left side for six more. got the call a third time and picked up a first down at the 31. Phil Bertolino took the next handoff, dodged several state liner defenders, and he romped 31 yards for a score. converted again and the Rovers had a 14 to 6 lead with 11 minutes to play. The score fired up the state liners who returned the kickoff to the 33. Jim Ferrer got the drive going with an 8 yard run. got the call again, but Easton was offsides and Phillipsburg had a first down at the 46. Kenny Lutz went to the air, but it was incomplete. Lutz came right back on second down and hit Jim Laubach for a 54-yard touchdown play. And Phillipsburg trailed by two. On the first extra point try, 
There was an offsides. Steve Emery made good in the second kick, and it was a 14-13 game in favor of Easton. Then with seven minutes left, Easton put the game away, returning the kickoff to the Phillipsburg 47. On first down, DeLuca was held to a yard. Then Henry Payne found a hole in the corner and scampered 18 yards for another first down. On the next play, Phil Bertolino slithered through a pileup at the line of scrimmage and went 28 yards for the score. Hanlon kicked his third extra point, and the Rovers were up by eight, 21 to 13. Easton got the ball back and drove to the Phillipsburg one. DeLuca got into the end zone, but a Rover penalty put the ball back at the six. DeLuca got the call again, this time a penalty on Phillipsburg. So we're back to the one. DeLuca finally made it official and the Rovers had one of the big upsets in series history. Hanlon's conversion made it a 28 to 13 final. The game marked the end of coach Frank Klein's Phillipsburg career. In 12 years, his teams won 84, lost 20, and tied nine with three teams posting unbeaten records. November 26th, 1953. Good weather, a big crowd, and a couple of win streaks. Phillipsburg had won four straight for a 6-1-1 record. Easton came in with three straight wins in the Thanksgiving Day Classic. The Stateliners had a potent offense and were favored over a Red Rover team that had been shut out three times. The Rovers took advantage of an early break. Dave Klaus was hit and fumbled and Sonny Merlo recovered for Easton at the Phillipsburg 19. Fullback Rocky for Chica hit the middle for two. John Bullett's pass for Hartman was incomplete. On third down, Merlo took a pitch right, but wound up with a four yard loss. It was fourth down at the 21, and Ballette found Merlo with a scoring strike, and the Rovers had the lead in the first period. Frank LaValva added the point after, and it was 7-0. Phillipsburg came right back in the third period as George Snyder carried to the 26. Snyder got the call again and hit for five yards and a first down. Then Dick Fritz was stacked up for no gain. Dave Klaus found an opening and appeared to be off for the end zone, but a rover caught him from behind at the Easton 31. George Snyder picked up two. Halfback Dick Fritz hit the left side, broke through a maze of players, and the 28-yard run had the state liners back in the ball game. Bayless added the point, and it was a tie game at 7-7 with nine minutes left in the third period. Three minutes later, Phillipsburg was at the Easton 30. Charlie Harrison set up a screen pass, but Rover defender Eston Morgan picked it off in the run and went 70 yards for the clincher. Frank LaValva booted the point, and Easton went on to win it 14-7. Phillipsburg had 200 yards rushing, but turned the ball over six times. It was the final game for Phillipsburg coach Sammy Moyer. In two years, he had a 12-5-1 record. Easton finished at 5-4-1. Easton made it five straight wins in 1954, pulling off a 7-6 upset as Coach Harold Bellis was going for a perfect season in his first year as state liner coach. The roles were reversed in 1955. Easton had won nine straight, a crowd of 20,000 on hand. After a scoreless first half in which an Easton TD was nullified by a penalty, Phillipsburg punted in the third period. 
Dick Benton fielded the ball and handed off to Charlie Claus, who was brought down at the Phillipsburg 36. Benton then hit the middle for three. Bentham found a hole in the dive play, and it was first down at the 23. Claus had to struggle to get a yard. Fullback Pete Americus hit the trap up the middle, and he was gone for 22 yards and a score. The State Liners then blocked Tony Blasco's extra point. It turned out to be a big block. Easton led 6-0. In the fourth period, Easton fumbled, and the State Liners' Gene Cowell recovered at the 34. Danny Charles took a pitch for a couple of yards. Halfback Charlie Bardos tried the middle. He hit for six yards. Then it was Charlie Bartholomew's turn. Five yards and a first down. <laughs> Gus Rogers decided to go for it all, but his pass was just incomplete to Gene Cowell in the end zone. <laughs> Bill Updike got the call in second down. He picked up three yards. Then it was Rodgers with the key play. A great fake. The ball in his hip, and 17 yards later, a first down at the one. Updike put it in the end zone, and the game was tied at six. Frank Bayless turned out to be the hero. His extra point was good, and Phillipsburg had a 7-6 lead with 5.45 to play. Now it was up to the Garnett and Gray defense. On the kickoff, America's bobbled it and was knocked down at the Rover 15. Eighty-five yards to go on the clock winding down, the Rovers went to Claws for one. Americus found that opening in the middle again for an eight-yard gain, a yard shy of a first down. Bentham got the first down, and Phillipsburg was hit with a personal foul penalty. First down Rovers at the Easton 45. Americus tried the middle again. He picked up four. Bobby Condors went to the air and Claus made a juggling act of a catch for a first down at the Phillipsburg 32. Coach Bob Root went back to Americus three yards this time. Then Billy Houston hit right tackle for four. Condors pulled in the state liner lineman and lobbed the screen to Americus for a first down at the 13 as the clock wound down under two minutes. The Rovers tried some trickery, but Jim Kick's end around was dumped for a one-yard loss. It was back to old reliable Pete Americus. He was stopped after a two-yard pickup. Again, the Rovers went to their bag of tricks. Condors pitched to Houston, who lobbed one to the end zone for kick. Just incomplete, almost intercepted. Now it was fourth down, do or die at the 12. Condors with a jump pass to Dan Gelbert, and the Rovers were two yards from victory. On first down, Houston got nothing as the final seconds ticked down. 
for one quick play. Condors in the sneak. His feet skidded out from under him, and the state liner defense preserved the 7-6 upset win. Easton settled for a 9-1 season. State liners went 6-2-1. The 1956 game featured a young Phillipsburg team against a high-scoring Easton offense. Easton was forced to punt in the opening period. The state liners took over on their own 45, and Tom Bronico started the drive with a five-yard run. Frank Tenemer hit the right side for a first down at the Easton 44. Charlie Bartholomew went straight ahead for four more. Staying on the ground, Tedemer got seven and a first down. Bronico got the call and went to the 30. Back to Tedemer again for three. On third down, Bronico hit the right side for a first down at the 21. Bronico was hit after a two-yard gain. Tedemer found a seam on the left side for 11 yards and first and goal at the eight. Pete Americus on the stop. Bartholomew managed only one yard up the middle. Bronico powered his way to the three. On third down, Bartholomew was stopped at the two. Hal Bellis then called on his bruising fullback, and Bronico responded on fourth down with the touchdown. He had 93 yards for the day. A bad snap ruined the point after, and Phillipsburg had a 6 to nothing lead. The crowd of 17,000-plus enjoyed the bands at halftime. In the third period, Phillipsburg drove to the six, and Dom Viscomi tried to sneak it in. Tedemer hit the left side, but lost the ball, and the Rovers' Dan Gelbert came up with the fumble recovery. Terry Bartolette handed to Pete Americus, who moved it out to the six. Bentham got a yard, but a penalty put the Rovers back on the two-yard line. Bartlett tried to get some daylight, but fumbled the ball, and Woody Hawk recovered for a Phillipsburg touchdown. This time, the Rovers blocked the extra point, and Phillipsburg led 12 to nothing. Late in the third period, Bartlett was throwing for Bill Houston, but Tom Kingfield picked it off and scampered 35 yards to Pater. Again, the extra point failed. But the State Liners had an 18-0 lead with 17 minutes left in the ballgame. Early in the final period, a State Liner mistake, a fumble, and Jim Nottoline recovered for Easton at the State Liner 14. Bartlett used a good fake and picked up three. Bentham got three more in the patented rover dive play. Danny Gelbert got the call in the end around. He broke a tackle to get a first down at the two, where Dick Lawrence made the stop. Bob Oat tried the middle, got a yard. Oat hit the end zone in the second try, and the Rovers were on the board. The extra point was no good, and the State Liners went on to post an 18-6 victory and give Coach Harold Bellis his third straight winning season. The Phillipsburg defense checked Easton with just 89 yards in total offense. Phillipsburg was on a four-game roll going into the 1957 game. The Rovers started early with Pete Americus getting four. Dave Cooper took a pitch, but the Rovers were offsides. On third and 11, 
Terry Bartolette lobbed a perfect strike to Bill Houston, who had gotten behind Dick Lawrence for a 73-yard touchdown play. Carl Piscatello split the uprights, and Easton had a 7-0 lead. In the second period, Phillipsburg had to punt. The Rovers set up the wall for their scatbacks. Bill Houston fielded the punt, then handed off to Charlie Hazen, who breezed 72 yards. But no touchdown. Easton is caught clipping at the 15. It's first down at the 30. Bartolette back to pass. He hits Harry Stagnito, who drags a tackler into the end zone. Piscatello hits the extra point, and the Rovers are up 14 to nothing. Then the only bright spot for Phillipsburg. Pete Americus is trying a sweep for the Rovers. After getting hit twice by Jack Sabo and Jesse Keeper, he fumbles. An All-Stater Bob Stem scoops up the ball. The convoy forms 75 yards for the touchdown. John Ashmore adds the point, and Easton's lead is cut to 14 to 7. In the final period, Easton recovers a fumble at the Phillipsburg 11. Bartolette gives to Houston, but his halfback pass for Dave Cooper is incomplete. Americus then hits the middle for eight. Bartolette manages to wedge them out for a yard. On fourth down, Americus gets the first down at the one. Houston then slants off the right side for the clinching touchdown. Piscatello's extra point is no good, but the Rovers have a commanding 20-7 lead with time running out. Americus later fumbled the ball and Phillipsburg recovered in the closing seconds. The fans ripped down the goalposts before time ran out. The State Liners ran off the final play and the celebration began. The Rovers' 20-7 win completed a 7-2 season with the fans looking ahead to 58 and a veteran team returning. 1958, and for the first time in the series, both teams came into the game unbeaten, 8-0 records. Phillipsburg got the early break in a fumble recovery by Steve Wesse at the Rover 23. Frank Tedemer started the series with a two-yard run. Fullback Marv Lippincott was stopped for no gain. On third down, Dom Viscomi's pass for Jack Sabo was incomplete. On fourth down, Viscomi went right back to Sabo, who made a juggling catch for a first down at the 11. Sabo tried a sweep left, but the Rovers' John Aviados chewed him up for a five-yard loss. With the ball at the 16, Marv Lippincott found a big hole up the middle, and the State Liners had drawn first blood. Greg Matviak's conversion was no good. Phillipsburg had a 6-0 lead, and that's the way the half ended. After an inspiring halftime message from Coach Bob Root, the Rovers responded in the third period. Bill Houston started a drive with a four-yard run. Houston hit the right side for seven more, and a first down at the State Liner 31. Houston got the ball again and picked up four in a sweep. Charlie Weaver tried the left side, but no game. On third down, Terry Bartolette managed to duck a fierce pass rush by Steve Wesse, and he hit Aviatos with a 20-yard scoring pass. Piscatello's extra point try was no good and the game was tied at six with 4.23 left in the period. Late in the third period, Phillipsburg's Russ Storm punted the Rovers in a hole at the nine-yard line.
Bartlett got some breathing room by sneaking for five yards. Houston hit the right side for a first down at the 20. Weaver hit left tackle for four more. Then the big play in the drive. Weaver broke into the clear and was finally hauled down from behind by Marv Lippincott. The 45-yard scamper put the ball in the Phillipsburg 31. Houston hit the middle for four more. Houston took advantage of a good block at the line of scrimmage to pick up five to the 22. On third down, Bartolette fooled the state liner defense, going to the air for an apparent touchdown to John Aviatos, but Easton was offsides on the play. Now it's third and six at the 27. Weaver gets the call and the first down. Bartolette went right back to Aviatos over the middle for nine yards. then picked up the first down by sneaking for two. On first down, Bartolette again went to the air, hitting Pat Turquati for the nine-yard scoring pass. Carl Piscatello booted the extra point, and the unbeaten Rovers had a 13-6 lead with nine minutes to play. Easton got the ball back within two minutes, and Charlie Weaver was off to the races. He used a straight arm on Jack Sabo and some great footwork to complete a 56-yard scoring run. Piscatello's extra point was no good, but Easton had a commanding 19-6 lead late in the final period. With under two minutes on the clock, the Rovers added a final TD as Weaver blasted off right tackle and dodged the state liners Marv Lippincott at the 15 for a 28-yard touchdown run. He had 175 yards in the day. Easton had a 26-6 win and an undefeated season. For coach Bob Root, he became the first individual to play on and coach an undefeated and untied team. Easton continued its winning ways in 1959, losing only to Baltimore Poly. In the second period, Easton started a drive at the state liner 35 with Charlie Weaver losing a yard. Pee Wee Pratt got two yards back. Then perhaps the wildest play in the history of the series, quarterback Tom Bender handed off to Pratt who passed to Weaver. The scat back worked his way to the 25 where he was hit by Jack Emery. The ball got loose at the 17 and everyone was in pursuit as it bounced crazily into the end zone. Russ Storm and Emery of Phillipsburg and Ray Rissmiller and Ernie Junta of Easton zeroed in on the slithery pigskin. When they unpiled, it was Junta coming up with it for an Easton touchdown. Carl Piscatello added the point and the Rovers had a 7-0 lead early in the second period. Late in the period, Phillipsburg moved to the Rover 14. A first down pass from Herb Bagley to Russ Storm was incomplete. Bob Havlisak tried the right side, but managed only two yards. Then another play for the history books. As Bagley faded to pass, he was hit by Joe Criazzo. The ball popped into the air, and Joe Mickley took it in stride for an 82-yard interception return and touchdown. Catello split the uprights again, and Easton led 14 to nothing. The Easton defense set up the final score in the fourth period. Russ Storm of Phillipsburg had to punt, but Bob Farber charged in and blocked it. Easton got the ball at the 11. Weaver tried to sweep right and fortunately fumbled the ball out of bounds at the three. hit right tackle again for two. On first down, Bender's quarterback sneak was stopped cold. Bender tried again and hit the end zone. 
The goalpost had been torn down, so Piscatello went to the other end of the field to kick the point and give Easton a 21-0 victory. Charlie Weaver finished his Rover career with 22 touchdowns. The 1960 game had both teams unbeaten but once tied when they came to Fisher Field. The Rovers' Sam Sortino fumbled in the first play, and Phillipsburg's All-State John Bronico recovered at the 17. With the Rovers unsettled, Bronico broke up the middle for 12 yards and a first down at the 5. Bronico got the call again, and he bowled his way to the 2. The state liners gave it to Bronico a third time, and he took it in off right tackle. Then what turned out to be the biggest play of the day, Harry Smith made the conversion, and Phillipsburg had a 7-0 lead. That's the way the half ended. In the third period, Johnny Eck punted for Phillipsburg. Mike Weaver took the punt in his own 38. He faked the handoff and then looked for the rover blocking wall. Dodging tacklers, he got a good block from Ron DeBona at the 48, and then outmaneuvered Bob Havlisak to go 62 yards for the score. Sam Sortino tried to tie it up, but a bad snap from center ruined that, and the state liners held on to their 7-6 advantage. In the closing minute, Easton made one final bit of victory. From the seven, Bob Arntz hit Sam Sortino at the end line, but the officials ruled Sortino was out of bounds, incomplete pass. On fourth down, Tony Robus lined up for a field goal, but Havlisak broke through for a clean block, and the State Liners held on for a 7-6 win. The State Liners then ran out the clock in the closing seconds to complete their seventh unbeaten season in school history. Easton had all the statistics, outgaining the State Liners 196 yards to 64. The win earned the State Liners the Newark News Trophy as state champs in the Garden State. The 1961 game was rated a toss-up as both teams had two losses coming in. Phillipsburg got the big break late in the final period as a punt by Easton's Jim Miller was high and short. Starting from the Easton 30, fullback Bill Hughes picked up five. Dave Darrymple tried the right side for four yards. Darrymple drove to the 19 for a first down. Hughes got the call on first down, but managed only a yard. Then Les Kish went to the air. He hit Johnny Eck for a first down. Eck's knee hit the ground at the six-yard line. Kish then fooled the Rovers' defense, faking the run to Art Wuppel and hitting Herb Stecker, who was wide open in the end zone. Stecker earned the series' first MVP award. Eck kicked the point after, and Phillipsburg had a 7-0 lead with just 1.35 to play. Easton failed to move the ball and had to punt, and Kish ran out the clock on a quarterback sneak. Phillipsburg had a 7-2 mark and finished ninth in the New Jersey Group 4 Sailor Rankings. Stecker and guard Jim Dick earned all state honors in the Garden State. In 1962, Easton brought a four-game win streak to Fisher Field while the state liners were struggling through a 2-3-3 three, and three year. In the second period, the Rovers' Mike Barnhart fumbled and Tom Patty recovered for the Garnet and Gray at the Easton 28. Patty got the drive going in the muddy field with a four-yard run. Jack Unanx tried the left corner and got three.
Cincinnati came up a yard short of the first down. On fourth down, quarterback Greg Seifert rolled left and got the first down at the 16. Wally Benak broke up the middle for five yards. Seifert tried another rollout, five more yards and a first and goal at the six. Fullback John Matiak hit left tackle for three. Seifert rolled left again, but this time the Rovers' Fred Vinson stacked him up. On third down, Seifert went left and found the end zone. Sal Patty booted the extra point, and Phillipsburg had a 7-0 lead, and the defense made it stand up at the half. In the third period, the Rovers were pinned back at their own three. Quarterback Fred Vinson got a little room to the six. Jim Patterson tried the left corner, but was closed down by four defenders. On third down, Steve Lissanikia came up short of the first down. Carl Bell was back to punt, but a low snap got away from him, and the state liners Jim Morris and Sal Patty wrapped him up for a safety. That made it 9-0, and the state liners had the upset win and averted a losing season. It did snap the Garnett string of 21 straight winning seasons. Easton finished at 6-2. Phillipsburg was the favorite in 1963. They were 6-1-1 one one with the only loss to East Orange, while Easton had a 5-3-1 record. 18,000 turned out on a crisp Thanksgiving afternoon at Fisher Field. Easton kicked off, and the defense held, forcing the state liners to give up the ball. The Rovers started at their own 13, and Chuck Amato fumbled the ball, with Wally Benak recovering for the state liners. On first down, Greg Seifert's pass for Art Armbruster was incomplete. Fullback John Matiak ripped the rubber line for nine big yards. Armbruster used a good cutback move to get the first down at the seven. Hal Bellis then went to his power, Matiak for two. Armbruster was held to a yard at the four. Seifert then rolled left for another yard. On fourth down, Seifert pitched to Benak, who passed to a wide-open Don Corbobo for the three-yard touchdown pass. Norm Thatcher booted the point, and Phillipsburg had a 7-0 lead. Later in the period, Jack Unax started a 60-yard scoring drive with an eight-yard pickup. Matviak got four and a first down at the Eastern 48. Unax picked up four blockers and rolled off 14 yards in a sweep. Matviak got the call on first down and hit for six. Phillipsburg tried to fool the Rovers as Ray Beidelman handed off to Armbruster, who handed off to Unax, but the reverse lost three. Seifert came up two yards short on a pass to Unax. On fourth down, Seifert hit Sonny Wilson on the screen, and the state liner back got a first down at the 18. Seifert then hit Corbobo, who made his second touchdown catch of the ball game. Thatcher's conversion was no good, and the State Runners had a 13-0 lead at the end of the first half. The bands entertained at halftime.
In the third period, Easton mounted its only drive of the day. Dave Diello got two yards to the Rover 44. Scott Rittenauer lost the snap, but recovered his own bobble. Joe Glory came in at quarterback and rolled left, looking downfield. He finally spotted big Carl Bell, who made a fine over-the-shoulder catch for a 58-yard touchdown play. Walt Palmer's extra point try was no good, and Phillipsburg held on to a 13-6 lead. Late in the third period, Easton's John Robinson fumbled, and Jim Morris recovered for Phillipsburg. Three running plays moved the ball to the Easton 42. Armbruster took a pitch out, cut back, broke some tackles, and slipped between two defenders. His 42-yard TD run turned the game in favor of the State Liners. Thatcher added the point after, and Phillipsburg had momentum and a 19-6 lead. Easton had the ball on the State Liner 47 early in the final period. As Joe Glory was trying to pass, he was hit by Morris, and Jim Farr recovered for Phillipsburg. Easton was off sides on the next play. Armbruster turned left end for nine yards and a first down. Matviak hit the middle for five more. Armbruster tried a delay but came up a yard short of the first down. Brewster got the yard on the next play. Matviak powered his way up the middle to the 18, and Easton was hit with a face mask penalty, which put the State Liners at the 9 with a first down. Seaford rolled left to the 4, behind a good block from Sonny Wilson. Unanx took it to the 2. And Sonny Wilson finished off the 48-yard drive. Thatcher's extra point was blocked, and Phillipsburg had a commanding 26-6 lead. On the kickoff, Chuck Amato returned the ball for the Rovers. Amato hit the left side for five yards. Amato went right and added two more. Whitnow fumbled the snap and lost a few yards. At this point, headlinesman Lloyd Sterner collapsed in the field, dead of a heart attack. John McIntyre was summoned from the stands as a fill-in official for the rest of the game. When play resumed, Bell punted to the State Liners. On the next play, Wilson powered off left tackle and scampered 66 yards for the final score of the day. Thatcher added the extra point to make it a 33-6 final. Arm Brewster was named the game's most valuable player. Phillipsburg piled up 263 yards rushing compared to 95 for Easton. It was the State Liners' fourth straight win over Easton. The State Liners added the Big Five title and were ranked eighth in the Sailor rankings in New Jersey. It was wet and muddy in 1964, perfect conditions for a defensive battle. Phillipsburg was going for an unbeaten season while the Rovers were up and down at five and four. The teams were scoreless through the first 23 minutes of the game. The Rovers were forced to punt with 40 seconds showing on the clock. Greg Seifert went to the air on first down. He just got the pass away over a rushing John Hockwater to Steve Geralliman for a first down at the Easton 27, where Dave Kemmerer made the tackle. 
Seifert decided to go for it all, but Mike Marino can't make the catch at the goal line. Seifert fades again. He's looking for Girolamin. It's almost picked off by Frank Friedel. Now it's third down. Seifert looks downfield, hits Marino at the five, and he takes it in. Sonny Wilson adds the extra point, and the State Liners beat the clock by 10 seconds for a 7 to nothing lead. The second half was scoreless as the Rover offense failed to mount a threat, posting only 56 yards total offense. It was the second unbeaten season for Coach Hal Dellis. Defensive end Scott Kersey was named most valuable player of the game as Phillipsburg ran its win streak to five on Thanksgiving Day with the 7 to nothing victory. The Rovers came into the 1965 game hoping to win one for Coach Bob Root, who had announced in October that he was retiring after 18 seasons. It also marked the first time that both coaches had sons playing in the game, Gary Root and Jim Bellis. Both teams were suffering through subpar seasons, Easton saddled with a four-game losing streak. Both offenses stalled on their first possessions, and the Rovers' Robbie Miller punted to the state liners. Starting from the Easton 46, Earl Clymer worked his way for four yards. Skip Hall got a good lead block from Earl Clymer and ran for a first down to the 33. The call went back to Clymer and with a good cutback, he picked up 30 yards before being hauled down at the three yard line. Climber got to the one. Then it was Steve Tripper going in for the touchdown. Tony Fornicari missed the point, and the State Liners had a six to nothing lead. In the second period, Easton's Dale Fritz made a solid play, intercepting a lateral by Climber. That set the Rovers up at their own 42. John Capilano tried to sweep left, but was stopped after a one-yard gain. Capilano hit the middle and picked up seven. Frank Friedel managed only a yard on third down. Fourth and one, Capilano powered his way up the middle for the first down. With the ball in the Phillipsburg 46, Gary Root handed off to Robbie Miller, and he was off to the races, outrunning two defenders. Capilano added the point to cap the 58-yard drive and give Easton a 7-6 lead. 5-40 remained in the half. The Rovers kicked off to open the third period. Starting from their own 32, Clymer gained a yard. Bill Duquette was back to pass, but the Rover defense dropped him for an eight-yard loss. Larry Weisenberger with the sack. Duquette tried it again. Again, the Rover defense responded, this time a seven-yard sack by John Jones. On fourth down, a bad snap from center, and Jim Farmer tried to run it out. He got as far as the six, and Easton had the ball. On the next play, Capilano bolted into the end zone for the clincher. The Rovers had a 13-6 win to finish a 4-6 season. Two months later, Coach Root rescinded his retirement notice and came back to coach two more years, going out in 1967 with an undefeated season. 
Pell, Bellis also retired in 1967 after 14 years. And ironically, the final game they coached at Fisher Field was a scoreless tie.